Now for Focus, and today we're heading to India, where a financial, technological and cultural revolution is underway. In November, the government took the country by surprise by announcing the removal of 85% of circulating banknotes in a bid to target the parallel shadow economy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressing the nation once again this month to outline his vision of a digital India. But is it a case of going way too fast too soon? Claire Juggler has more. This is the first Indian village that does not need cash. A Kodura in the Indian state of Gujarat is a true digital oasis. In this primary school, tablets have replaced paper. Tablet, spelling go. Pachi. Pachi. Rangpurta. In this classroom, an overhead projector serves as the backboard and the lessons have become more interactive. Thanks to digitization, Akodera is also a model for financial development. Each villager here has a bank account and receives his salary on time. But most importantly, at a time when India reels under a cash crisis, people here don't need currency for shopping. Bhavin Patel simply sends an SMS to his bank indicating the price of his purchase. If I carry money in my pocket, I'm going to spend it, but if the money stays in the bank, then I only use what's necessary. And what's new, I earn interest on it too. I don't even carry a wallet anymore, see? I don't have one. <laughs> For the Indian Prime Minister, Akodera is a model village. Because of the sudden withdrawal of 85% of all currency notes, there is a massive cash shortage across India. Narendra Modi is using the opportunity to force the digitization of the Indian economy, even for the poorest and the most illiterate. Your thumb is now your bank. Your thumb is now your proof of identity. Your thumb is now your business. But this digital dream is far from being realized. In another village in Gujarat, there is no internet and therefore no electronic payment facility. These farmers have always been paid in cash. In the midst of demonetization, their lives have come to a standstill. We've not been paid for two months. So we were forced into opening a bank account two days ago. But there's still a lot of paperwork to do before we can get any money. In the cities, the digital economy is growing rapidly. It took only 10 days for almost 10 million people to download BIM, a new wallet launched by the Prime Minister. Saket Modi helped create this app. Uh, it's so much more than just technology because you talk about a lifestyle and how people change their lifestyles, how every single aspect of a human, both personal and professional, every vertical that businesses are done is changing thanks to digital. The rush to digitize the Indian economy without any preparation has also led to an explosion in cyber crimes. Prasad Sudanti claims that his bank account was hacked through a new wallet app. He lost 3,500 euros. I never had any anything to do with Paytm, that is the e-wallet company, or neither I have registered uh, myself or my phone is connected or my bank account is connected. In spite of that, how this happened is beyond my imagination. 80% of all transactions are still done in cash in this country, and nearly a billion people don't have access to the internet. Prime Minister Modi's digital dream will require a radical change in attitudes. And joining me in the studio is Joël Rue, a specialist on India's economy. Thanks for coming in. Okay. Uh, India has been facing, as we've seen there, a currency crisis uh, with those 500 and 1,000 rupee notes being withdrawn from the public circulation as part of a crackdown on corruption and uh, illegal cash holdings. And we saw massive queues outside banks. As a result, looking back, has this been a disaster for the government? Well, the question was, uh, 
Has it been too fast? It's not a disaster. It's working. It's progressing. The app is working. So the question could be, has it been too fast? It all depends. Is it an economic reform or is it a political reform? I trust it's a political reform. They're not targeting the small economy. They're not targeting the informal economy. They're targeting corruption. And most of the people, most of the citizens of Finia are direct or indirect victims of corruption whenever they want to buy land, whenever they want to buy a flat. More than 80% of land transactions are black money. 50% of uh, real estate transactions are black money. When you want something from the administration, you have to tip, you know, and it's again black money. So had it been announced, prepared, and etc., the very idea of trapping the guys who had collected those 500 and 1,000 notes, 500 rupees and 1,000 notes, which are big notes, which are big currencies, uh, which are not what the daily poor or the poor use daily uh, in their life, this whole uh, idea would have failed. So they had to be fast. But is it a case of being too fast too soon? There's never too soon. It had to happen. And uh, the too fast is uh, you have to look at cities and you have to look at the country. In cities, people have had a massive, uh, pervasive uh, introduction of uh, mobile phones, not always uh, uh, smartphones, but they have not many points where they can go connect and etc. The bank were ready in terms of technology and etc. So you would say there's a matter of a couple of months, three months, maybe four months until there will be a reintroduction of new nodes, by the way. So those people who don't want to possibly go through the digital economy, they will still access, re-access in the near future some new nodes. Now, in the country, uh, again... It's, it's a very different story in the country. It's a very different story. But again, they are the, the, the people who had been the most victimized by this corruption. Uh, the former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi used to say that for one single rupee, which is scheduled to go on aid, 90% is eaten by corruption. So they were already victimized. We didn't see that. So again, the transition might be a bit difficult, but again, uh, they still have the notes of 50 rupees, 100 rupees, and etc. Uh, but it's in their uh, midterm interest, I believe. Now, in one way, while, of course, the digitalization of the economy is, is being pushed to deal with corruption, the reality is another evil then spreads and that, of course, being cybercrime. And we saw that in that report with somebody already being a victim of cybercrime. Again, as, is this a case of the government not fully thinking this through in terms of ensuring that all bases are covered in order to ensure that uh, everything is now above board? The Prime Minister is taking a political risk. It's a political gamble. Sanjay Baru, who's been a... Uh, communication advisor to former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh has written a wonderful piece saying that this is the one single most political uh, decision that has ever been made in India since independence because this is the one single decision that affects, touches every single person in India. So at the end, this will be for the Indian citizens to judge. Uh, we don't have statistics, you know, we don't have statistics of how much people were getting uh, racketed under the old system and any new system and a new reform will have issues. I'm not denying the issues, but this will be for the public to, to judge. And this is the uh, measure which in, through one single measure has allowed Narendra Modi to enter into the households of every uh, Indian, Indian citizen. So he's facing the risk, he's taking the risk. I think it's politically measured. Economically, it was difficult to uh, account for everything. I think I'm so positively surprised, I would say, when it got announced at the early, uh, at the beginning of November, there was a bit of uh, fear spread throughout uh, across society, you know. And what we see, we see some issues which are getting fixed gradually, but we don't see a massive chaos at all. Uh, Joel Rue, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that's it for this edition. Do stay with us here on France 24. There'll be more news on the top of the hour.